Okay, Alexander, let's talk about the uh, latest developments on Assange and what's going on there. We have, uh, we have the case. We have everything that's unfolding right now, and we'll find out where, uh, what Assange's fate will be, I guess, very, very soon. What's the, what's the outlook? Uh, it's right. We've had a roller coaster on this. Um, at times, it's looked extremely bleak. If we, take our, if we go back all the way to the original hearing, you remember, somewhat unexpectedly, back in January, the judge at the lower court, Judge Baritza, decided that she would support, she would side with the United States on every single contentious issue. Um, um, but she also decided that she would not allow his extradition, Assange's extradition, to the United States on one specific point which is that she was worried that if he was sent to the United States, because he has all kinds of health issues, he would not survive the experience of the kind of high-category prison that the United States was intending to send him to. And that seemed to, that seemed to many people as being the basic end of the case, because it's very difficult to overturn a decision of a judge on a point like that. I mean, the judge has made a finding of fact about Assange's health and a finding of fact about the American prison system. And that really ought to be the end of it. And an appeal from that kind of decision would not normally be allowed. And then a few weeks ago, to everybody's astonishment and collective horror, the High Court, after a lot of dithering, allowed the United States permission to appeal and it allowed the United States permission to appeal on the grounds that the judge was actually made a wrong assessment about Assange's mental health and that the expert that the uh, judge followed was unsound, was not, uh, you know, was not reliable for various reasons. And that that whole question of the extent of Assange's health needed to be reopened. And the judge who made that decision who is a judge called Lord Justice Holroyd, it then turned out was going to be the judge who was going to hear the appeal, the appeal that's starting today. So he was a judge who found for the United States that there is a question about whether or not Assange really is as ill as the lower court judge thought he was. And that judge, having already found for the United States on that issue, is the judge who was going to decide the appeal that's being heard today. So that made people very worried, and they said, my goodness, it's looking as if things are very bleak and very difficult for Assange. And then about a week ago, there was another sudden change, and we learned that while Lord Justice Holroyd will remain a judge in the case, he has been joined by a second judge, far senior to him, who is Lord Justice Burnett, Lord Chief Justice Burnett. Now, he is the most senior trial judge in Britain, and he is widely believed to be a decent man and also a very, very fine lawyer. And Lord, Just Lord Chief Justice Burnett is the judge who has in the past said that people who have health problems should not be extradited to the United States because the risks they might face from the US prison system. So that has raised hopes slightly because it looks as if this very hostile judge, hostile to Assange, or at least so he seems, Lord Justice Holroyd, is now being balanced out by an even more senior judge, Lord Chief Justice Burnett, who, based on his at past, looks like he might be more sympathetic to Assange. So it's very uncertain. No one can say with confidence what's going to happen. What we do know is that the United States, the US authorities, are pushing very hard on this point that if Assange is sent to the United States, if he is convicted there, he won't serve his sentence in the United States. He will serve his sentence in Australia itself, it's in Australia instead. And that seems to be their main argument at the moment.
which I imagine is BS. Um, oh, that's you know, absolute that's BS. I mean, I, I mean to, to, to say it frankly, I mean, nobody outside a courtroom takes that seriously. But, you know, the weird thing about courts and hearings is that what is so obviously BS to the outside world in a court can somehow suddenly, in a weird, wonderful kind of way that's possible only for courts and lawyers and judges, gets twisted and becomes somehow something else. And, you know, I, I, I'm not going to say that it's not impossible that this court might decide, come round and say, oh, well, you know, this is a perfectly good compromise. Let's go with it. I mean, it would be absurd if they did. But, you know, there's been so many weird and wonderful and terrible things happened over the course of the Assange case that I wouldn't be surprised if they did say that. But, you know, let's wait and see. Uh, the appointment of Burnett to the to hear to hear this case is a hopeful sign. But of course there's also the risk that the reason they brought in the most senior trial judge in Britain to make the decision is because they hope that if he does decide to extradite Assange, that ex Assange should be extradited, that it'll be all but impossible to go against the decision of such a senior judge. So it could be a good sign. It looks like a good sign, but one can't even be sure of that. Yeah, why it doesn't make any sense. Why extradite Assange to the United States? Then they, then they could extradite him to Australia. They can pass judgment on him and then send well, him I know, to Australia. I know. It doesn't make any sense at all. He's well, facing a hundred was a hundred and seventy five year sentence in the United States. He appeared in court, Alexander. He said he wasn't well enough to feel in court, but he actually did appear on a video link. They had to, when all was said and done, he appeared via video link and was described by journalist Tariq Haddad as coughing and wincing in pain. If he goes to the U.S., he's, uh, it's not well, good. I'm not, I'm not going to well, elaborate indeed. on that. It's not good. Well, it's not good. Well, can I also say anyway that, of course, if he goes to the United States, there's absolutely nothing to prevent the United States changing its decision. They could say, well, you know, we did tell the High Court in, in Britain that he would be sent to serve his sentence in Australia, but for all sorts of reasons that were have come up now, we can't go along with that, and we think it's much better and more appropriate that he serves his sentence in the United States instead. And then what do the British do? I mean, the British have no recourse. The High Court can't change what the Americans decide if he goes to America. They can't come along and say to the Americans, well, you know, you gave your word and you must honour it, because the Americans could just say, well, Go well, go away. You know we're not paying any attention. You know what we said in the in the court was then. What we're going to do is now, and we're not going to waste time worrying about what we said then. The fact is, we've decided that he's going to serve his sentence in the United States. And as I said, it's a, it's a completely toothless. It's an absolutely pointless assurance. And it was if the Australians wanted him in prison in Australia, they would presumably have said so. And they would have probably presumably brought their own extradition request, though heavens knows on what ground. Well, on so what grounds is, he, why, yeah, why, what grounds why, is all why, of this happening? Well, indeed, well, indeed, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's, exactly. There, there, there's exactly. nothing, there, there's no charges against Assange at this point. On what grounds no. is all this happening? What a bunch no. of cowards in the UK no, no. government, too, because, you know, they just well, want to wash the, their hands. And the uh, and uh, the ju and the judiciary and the judiciary. Yeah, they, they just well. want I mean, to wash their hands of the whole Assange thing. They just want to yeah. just just send it to the U.S. and let's be done with it because they're too much of uh, of cowards to actually stand up to uh, to the Biden White House. Out of all the White well, I know. Houses, well, I know. the 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 idiot Biden White House. Boris Johnson is too chicken shit to stand up to to sleepy Joe Biden and just tell him, you know what, Joe, just just leave us alone. In ten minutes. Give Joe Biden some vanilla ice cream and he'll forget about Assange in 10 minutes. Well, Believe absolutely. me, that's, that's, I, all, I, that, that's all that I, you need I, to do. I, 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 entirely um, agree. I entirely agree. And, I mean, that's, you're, you're absolutely right. I mean, and Australia will, is, and just to find, just one final point, Australia, what a bunch of cowards to not save their own damn citizen. Well, absolutely, exactly. I mean, you know, instead of coming along and saying, you know, you know we coming out and defending and protecting their own citizen, they're going along with this idea that he should serve a sentence in Australia, even though he's not wanted for any crime in Australia. I mean, that's, I mean, it's absolutely, you have to take a step back and think it through. I mean, the whole thing is bonkers. I mean, why should he be imprisoned in Australia 
when the, the Australians say he's committed no crime there. <laughs> what possible grounds would there be for doing such a thing? You know what all of this shows? All of this shows. It shows that there is one world government, and that world government is the surveillance state. They own the U.S., they own the U.K., and they own Australia. Whoever is, you could say maybe it's it's the surveillance mm. state that owns the five eyes. But that's what this has shown. Because I, I, without I, a doubt, all those governments, whether it's Morrison, Boris, or S- Sleepy Joe, whatever that government even is at this point in time, uh, they're completely helpless when it comes to what the surveillance state wants. I, I entirely, well, well, I entirely agree with that. I'm going to add something else, by the way, which is that, again, and I read a very interesting and rather disturbing article about this in, of all places, the National Review. Not, not a magazine I particularly like, by the way, but on this, I thought it was absolutely right, which is that they said that we're moving away. We, we, are, we are abolishing the rule of law in the West and in the United States, and we are replacing it with something called with something that has the appearance of legal process so we go through all the appearance of having hearings and courts and judges legal arguments and lawyers and they all present their different views and do all their various things but in fact and in practice and in reality the decisions are actually being made elsewhere and they're not being made for juristic reasons, for legal reasons. They're being made for political ones. And we have a surveillance state, and that surveillance state operates outside the law, and we see what it is doing to the law. It is, it is hollowing it out. Yeah, and if this goes through the way that we're saying it goes through, the, the worst-case scenario, then uh, the, the United States, the UK, Australia is lost. Absolutely, I, co- I completely Once they get agree. Assange, I mean, they're, it's, they're going yeah, absolutely. to go after everybody. They're lost. Well, any, any, I mean, at that point, uh, re- uh, investigative reporting is dead, and uh, secrets, uh, uh, real, real secrets, simply can't be published anymore because anybody who does that risks uh, having the same thing done to them as has just been done to Assange. So that's that's the reality of it. It's, I mean, it's a terrible, it's a terrible thing. But that's that's what it would be. That's what it would amount to. Yeah. These are the same governments that all of these people in Australia, the United States, and the UK are putting so much trust in when it comes to uh, to, to all of this uh, this coup stuff. The same governments, the same surveillance. Very good. Square that circle. <laughs> well. <laughs> I, I don't think I can add any comment to that. I mean, I think that question answers itself, actually. All right. A- any other uh, things to talk about? Well, let's not, get, let's, 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 let's not give up hope. As I said, there have been situations in political trials around the world where uh, judges remember that they are supposed to be judges and that they have a higher duty to the law. And, you know, they come round and they do the right thing. The judge in the lower court, Judge Baritza, uh, many people had expected that she would decide to extradite Assange to the United States, and she refused to do so, even though she came up with the weakest, well, the most unlike, well, the, the, the ground that, uh, uh, I'm not saying it was a weak ground, on the continent, it's a very strong ground, but she could have found for, against the US on all sorts of other grounds too. But anyway, she did refuse to extradite him. She did the right thing, and it's not impossible that these judges might do the right thing also. And Lord Chief Justice Burnett is somebody who has a good reputation. Now, let's see whether, how, whether you know, he, he cares about that and he cares about the integrity of the law and he is a man who has the essential humanity and the decency to do the right thing by Julian Assange. But, you know, I say that, I say that without at the same time offering a huge amount of hope either. One has to be realistic. Yeah, I mean, if if he followed the law, strictly speaking, if he followed the law, then Assange should be let go right away. I mean, it's a, a no brainer. But because this is political, I'll fall back on on Boris and Morrison. They should have stepped in and they should have prevented all of this from happening. Both I, or one of the two. I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. All right. We'll uh, leave it there. Guys, go to the dot com. You'll find us there. Take care.